You're listening to the Bill Kelly Podcast. Here's your host, Bill Kelly. Welcome back to the Bill Kelly Podcast. I'm Bill Kelly. Good to have you with us again today. Uh, I want to talk about the Greenbelt situation here in the province of Ontario and, and Doug Ford. And it's starting to look more and more as if uh, this Greenbelt fiasco, and that's what it's turning into right now, is, is Doug Ford's kryptonite. And this is not a partisan issue. Um, Dalton McGiddy, as a liberal premier, ran through the same sort of thing with the gas plant scandal and who knew what, who benefited from it, et cetera, et cetera. There are actually charges laid in that situation. And, and there may well be with the Ford situation and the Greenbelt, too. We're not there yet. There's uh, still the possibility of an OPP investigation into that. But uh, to put this all in perspective, uh, let's let's go back just a little bit, okay? And we'll talk about the partisan politics involved in this. And I think it's, first of all, important for us to take a trip down memory lane, if you would, because this is not the first time that Doug Ford has exploited the office of premier for the benefit of, well, not us, but some of his buddies and some of the people that write checks for both he and the Progressive Conservative Party. And sometimes politicians can use their office and their position and their power for payback. For instance, in the Doug Ford circumstance, this started really just after his ascension to power as premier when he arbitrarily decided to slash the size of Toronto City Council. Uh, the history, of course, is that he was a former Toronto councillor, but more importantly, his brother, the late Rob Ford, was the pro- the mayor at the time, of course. And, uh, well, he had some enemies on city council, as is want to happen, right? Uh, so what Ford did is arbitrarily decided to uh, reduce the size, which coincidentally eliminated the council seats of many of those councillors who had opposed Ford's brother during the other time as mayor. They were kind of the, the one-two combination. Uh, both Rob and Doug Ford on that Toronto City Council. Then, of course, uh, there was Ford's attempt to try to install a new OPP commissioner. A good friend of Ford's wanted the job, but did not meet the qualifications for the job. So what did Doug Ford do? Well, he simply changed the rules to allow his friend to qualify. <laughs> I think, I'm not making this stuff up. This is happening, and, and this is all documented. We all know that this went on. The public outcry was so intense, of course, that the applicant withdrew, but Ford was unwilling to accept any culpability in that fiasco. He still figured he was the person for the job. So with all of this stuff, and probably a lot more that we may not even be aware of, it should come as really no surprise that Ford, once again, has tried to distance himself from the partisan and possible illegal attempts to give some of his major supporters access to some parcels of land designated in the Greenbelt. He's doing this all, of course, under the false premise that these lands were absolutely necessary to address the housing shortage in this province. Now, let's let's talk about that for just a second. It's it's worth noting that Ford's own hand-selected task force that he picked and charged to with the responsibility of of finding out what we needed to do in this province to address the housing shortage. Well, they reported back, and and these were all conservative appointees, by the way, uh, led by Tim Hudak, who was the former leader of the Ontario Conservative Party, Progressive Conservative Party. So that report finally does come down, and uh, this hand-selected task force tells us that there is more than enough available land for housing without even touching the green belt. But Doug Ford ignored that expert advice and instead seemed to pander to the wishes of some developers, specifically uh, developers who had made substantial contributions to the Ontario Progressive Conservative Party. Now, those journalists and armchair pundits who still chose to defend Ford, and continue, by the way, in many circumstances, to defend Ford and simply dismiss this controversy by claiming, hey, uh, come on, he's just trying to build homes. Leave him alone. This is what he's trying to be doing. Uh, These are to developers. These are the people that seem to benefit from this. Remember that question we asked at the beginning? Who benefits? Uh, An awful lot of people with an awful lot of money uh, and an awful lot of people who wrote checks to the Ontario Conservative Party are the ones who are going to be developing and are going to benefit from this, rather. Land developers are not necessarily home builders, by the way. We have to make that distinction. These are are land speculators, oftentimes. Uh, Most are looking to flip the land to try to make a profit for it. For example, recently, one of those uh, developers who benefited from Ford's Greenbelt reversal was granted access to the land near Pickering. He had it rezoned, and within days, he put it on the market to flip it and to sell it to somebody else. So much for, you know, wanting to build homes there. Recent reports from the Auditor General and the Ethics Commissioner here in Ontario, of course, have offered pretty substantive evidence that the Premier and the Municipal Affairs and Housing Minister are guilty of severe breaches of Ontario ethics and law. And now we know that the RCMP is considering doing their own investigation. Uh, And who knows where that's going to go? Well, who knows if they're even going to do it? 
but this has happened before. You know, we talked about the McGinty government uh, and their kryptonite, to use that the same metaphor, uh, which was the gas plant scandal. We're going to where these things are going to be built, who benefits, etc. And uh, there was a, an RCMP, an OPP investigation into that, and uh, charges were laid, and people were convicted of, of egregious behavior. I don't know if that's going to happen here or not. We'll have to, to wait and see. Uh, and But the fact that this is happening and the fact that the investigations seem to be ramping up is not good news for this government. Now, how have they responded to this? Well, that's a different story. Uh, a junior staffer initially resigned, and, and the Premier and the Municipal Affairs Minister uh, wanted us to believe that this is the guy that was doing all this. He was the one that was making the deals on the side with these these land developers and land speculators, and the Premier was not really aware of what was happening. Now, if you believe that, i got a bridge I want to sell you, too. I mean, <laughs> nothing happens in this government without Premier Ford's knowledge. Uh, and as a matter of fact, just about every government, you know, whatever you want to talk about, nothing happens without the head person, whether it's a premier, a prime minister, a mayor, whatever the case might be. Of course they have oversight over this. Of course that's what was happening. But he wants us to believe, and many people are writing and, and blogging, that, look, this is just Doug Ford trying to be the, the, the great premier that he wants to be, and he's going to build housing for us. Now stop getting in his way. Nothing of this magnitude involving billions of dollars happens without the Premier's knowledge. That's something that we need to remember through this whole discussion and whole debate. And it does not have to be, I think, considered as a partisan issue. All kinds of governments do this, which is why we have oversight, which is why we have people that set rules and why we have people that will investigate possible uh, incursions of, of ethics and rules. And, well, it's happening here, too. And, and I don't know that the Ford government expected it to happen to the degree that it's happening. But here we go. And we have to play a part in this as well. It's one thing for the, the, for the Auditor General, I think, to do a report and the Ethics Commissioner to do a report. And they've done their work. Uh, we don't know what the RCMP are going to do at this stage. But you and I have a responsibility to talk about this and to let your governments and your government officials know exactly what's going on. And it doesn't take a whole lot of work. All it takes is a phone call, an email, whatever the case might be, and you've got to let them know. You you can't be silent on this. Now, I'm, I know some of the people listening to this are going to say, I think it's, he's fine. He's doing whatever we want him to do. Uh, God bless him. Well, that's fine. And, you know, we want to express that opinion. Knock yourself out. Uh, but you should be contacting your MPP. Uh, whether it's a conservative MPP, a liberal NDP, Green Party, whatever the, the, the party affiliation might be, let them know how you feel about this. Because absence of uh, absent rather of, of any push for you, me, and the public, the government's simply going to carry on doing what they were doing. Your silence speaks volumes. You've got to react to this, and you've got to let the government know if you're concerned about this, if you're concerned about incursions into the Green Belt. There's that element to it which is one of the reasons why I think this, this discussion uh, continues to go, and as a matter of fact, continues to grow, because there are so many different layers to this. Yes, there's the environmental aspect to this, and that's important. That's, that's not to be dismissed. Uh, you know, we all know, I think, and I, that we all have to be stewards of, of our environment and stewards of the land around us, and we haven't done a very good job of that in the past which is one of the reasons why the Greenbelt legislation came into being in the first place. And it doesn't mean there's going to be no development here. Quite the opposite. We need to develop, and we need to build houses, and we need to build more industry, but it's a matter of where we do it and the impact it's going to have on the environment. And we have to make sure that these decisions are made in that context, and that's not always the case. And that's, I think, of paramount importance as we go through this. Contact the Premier's office. You can do it, by the way. You can send an email. It's at correspondence.premier.gov.on.ca. And uh, send a note and just say, we are opposed to what you're doing. Leave the green belt alone. If you've been driving around over these last couple of months uh, around some of these affected areas, and there's some in Hamilton, there's some, some in other areas around here too, you'll see the signs. Leave the green belt alone. People are concerned about this. And they're not going to go away. And the government has to understand that. Uh, we've seen some other changes. Of course, that junior member that, that resigned uh, was not the end of it. Uh, because of the ongoing pressure, eventually Steve Clark, the Municipal Affairs and Housing Minister, also stepped aside and resigned. Uh, now, some people are suggesting that, well, the government has to, has to change altogether. And, and the Ford uh, administration has to be held accountable. And maybe the Premier should resign himself. Let's be realistic about this. 
That's not going to happen, okay? Not going to happen. This is a majority government, uh, and he's not going to get booted out of office. Now, if there are criminal charges brought, and I know we're going way down this road into speculation, uh, that's a different matter, but we'll deal with that when and if that should happen. Let's first of all address how we want this government to respond to this, and because there are some new developments on this uh, over the next little while. Of course, Steve Clark has resigned. Uh, Paul Calandra is now the new Municipal Affairs and Housing Minister, and there's been a change in attitude because of all the you-know-what that hit the fan over the last little while. Premier, as he has done in some of these other rather controversial decisions, uh, said, look, it, maybe it's time for a reevaluation. When he heard the story, reported by the Toronto Star, uh, that one of his uh, cronies uh, that he had given land to in the Pickering area uh, decided to flip it and put it on the market, uh, he says, we're going to stop that, and maybe, maybe we're going to put more of this land back into the green belt. And some people thought, hey, that's a glimmer of hope. Maybe this pressure is really starting to pay off. Well, enter Paul Calandra, the new minister, and he says, yeah, we are going to do an evaluation, a reevaluation of the green belt, but it might lead to even more lands in the green belt not protected anymore and open up for development, which is the total opposite of what people are asking for here. It's, it's just like the government decides now, hey, we're going to double down on this because you can't stop us. It's, I think, shocking that they would take that sort of an attitude. Now, we don't know that they're going to do that, but when the, the minister says that's a, a possibility, uh, that <laughs> kind of sounds like these guys are just kind of setting the scene and setting the stage for that sort of a decision to be made. Uh, and that's that's just not what we're looking for in this situation. It, it, it seems as if the, the, the premier himself just seems to flip-flop on this. I mean, you, you listen to him say one thing out of one side of his mouth, and the next day something totally opposite to that. I mean, he's flip-flopping like a fish out of water. Uh, of course, the premier seems to have little regard for endangered species in Ontario's wetlands, so he probably doesn't understand that analogy. But that that's that's apparent that he doesn't seem to understand exactly what he needs to be doing, despite the damning reports from the Auditor General and the Integrity Commissioner pointing to unethical and, and maybe even illegal actions. The Ford government and its cronies, have, who paved the way for these huge financial gains by many of his campaign contributors, have decided that, look, we're going to keep on doing this. Because uh, really, you know, who's going to stop us at this stage? There's no opposition of any note in the Ontario legislature. Uh, the public pressure is coming from uh, media sources, of course, who have done some fantastic reporting, investigative reporting on this. But as we mentioned a second ago, you and I have a role to play in being loud and, and, and insistent that the government has to consider doing something else about this. And by the way, the latest uh, pronouncement by the Premier that they may actually take more lands out of the Green Belt was made uh, a couple of days ago at Ford Fest, which by the way is something else that just really gets under my skin. Uh, I, I, if any Liberal leader or NDP leader put on a festival so they could wallow in their own wonderfulness and name it after themselves, they'd be vilified by the outraged media and by people in the public. But apparently, uh, Ford gets away with it. You know, it's, it's just Doug being Doug, and that's fine, and that's dandy. So it's Ford Fest. Self-serving, yeah. Self-aggrandizing, absolutely. Uh, unethical, probably too. But anyway, this, this is where he makes this announcement. And, of course, people are jumping up and down all over again. Uh, but you got to understand the tactics that are going on here. And, and I think that's really where we need to go and, and I think really underscore exactly what this government's trying to do to us here. Uh, and that's the art of political deflection. When you're getting the shit kicked out of you uh, by not just the opposition parties, but by the media who are doing some great work on this to find out exactly what is happening and who benefits, the best possible po political scenario for the government is to change the channel. Get people thinking about something else. Stop thinking about the green belt. So, you know, and initially that was the strategy. They said, forget about this stuff. Yeah, I know the environmental stuff, blah, 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 blah. But we need housing, and we need to build housing everywhere. And no matter what, no matter what the past rules were, we're just going to keep building houses. Well, we already know that, you know, the government's own uh, investigative work on that says that's not necessarily the case. But this is Ford and his cronies, again, in, in Queens Park, trying to defend their actions. And uh, as a matter of fact, on Friday, we mentioned that his, his little speech with his, his, his supporters at uh, Ford Fest, he actually went off onto a different tangent altogether. 
and started talking about, well, sexual identity issues for, for youth. It's a hot issue for a couple of uh, his uh, conservative uh, premier buddies, of course, in Saskatchewan and New Brunswick. And I guess he figures, hey, I can make some political hay here in Ontario if I start talking about that. I mean, that's that's the mantra that this government's talking about. It's housing, 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 housing. And he even talked about that just a couple of days ago. Uh, now he's offering a, a suggestion here, this, this outrageous idea that his government is going to supply land and build houses, hundreds and hundreds of houses, 1,600 square feet. He says he went into details about this i mean this this is ridiculous 1600 square feet house with a finished basement and a backyard and he's going to offer them for five hundred thousand dollars now that is about half the price the market price of what a house like that would be here in southern ontario in the gtaha area five hundred thousand dollars now how's it going to happen well he didn't tell us uh, but, boy, he got loud applause from all his fans and fan family, of course, at, at Ford Fest when he makes this announcement. He even went down to uh, in another rabbit hole here and, and started getting into the discussion about what was going on with gender identity. Now, this is a hot issue, of course, uh, with a couple of his conservative premier buddies uh, in Saskatchewan and in New Brunswick. And I guess Ford figures, hey, I can make some political hay here in Ontario. It's certainly going to solidify his support with the hard right base of the conservative movement here in Ontario. Uh, but it's got absolutely nothing to do with the crises that uh, are facing a number of families here in this province. But he figures, what the hey? It all goes back to this whole idea about changing the channel. Don't think about the green belt. Think about gender identity. Think about a number of different issues. Just don't start lambasting us once again about this. It's it's political manipulation. Now. Again, I said this was not going to be a partisan issue, and it's not, because other governments do this. Whatever political stripe, uh, you know, when the heat is turned on, they want you to look over here. Don't look here at this issue that's really got people bothered. And, and that's truly what's going on here. We can't fall for this. I mean, it, first of all, I get angered when I see governments do this because it's insulting to think that we're that naive, that we're going to fall for that sort of stuff. We, we can't. We've got to let them know that we're angry. It's like that little line from the classic movie in the 60s network. We're mad as hell, and we're not going to take this anymore. And shame on them for, for trying to perpetrate this this whole this scam to make sure that, that his rich cronies uh, get rewarded for their contributions to the party. That's not supposed to happen in our system. And we've got to be loud, and we've got to be adamant about making sure that something gets done and the justice is done. There's so much to cover, so many different details that need to be broadcast and need to be, I think, put forth for you. And we're so happy to have this platform, and we continue to do it all the time. So thank you so much for this, and uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Bill Kelly, a critical conversation in a critical time. This podcast was brought to you by Rebecca Wizens and her team at Wizens Law. Rebecca Wizens is a 20-time winner of the Hamilton Reader's Choice Awards for their exceptional client care and legal practice specializing in personal injury, car accidents, accidental falls, and Wilson Estates. Now, if you or a loved one have been seriously injured, or if you want to make sure that your family is taken care of for the future with the will and powers of attorney, call Rebecca Wizens, 905-522-1102 for a free consultation. When life happens, you can rely on Rebecca Wizens and Wizens Law. And trust me, Rebecca is my wife, and I don't know what I'd do without her. That's Wizens Law, 905-522-1102 for a free consultation. Subscribe to my Substack for timely news updates and commentary straight to your inbox. Let's keep the conversation going. I'd love to hear your thoughts on today's episode. Let me know what you think we should be talking about next by contacting me through my website at www.billkelly.co. Thanks for tuning in. This is Bill Kelly. Till next time, you take care.